Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz, and welcome back to the Dyson Sphere program. Where last time we built our interstellar logistics hub, which will be an entire planet dedicated to sending and receiving items to bring to our main solar system, Kappa Delphini. And last time, we went hunting for a new solar system to harvest, and we settled on Beta Geminorum, and built a new logistics world over here. Well, that was only to establish the link between solar systems. Now it's time to exploit that. And our main goal today is to harvest that galaxy and start sending over all of these specific materials and a variety of other things so that we can super automate all of our logistics items. But today it's gonna be all about production. And we're going to build our first complete forge world. And if you're excited for that, remember to leave a like. It really does help me out, and all it takes is one quick smash. And now I have a quick question for you. How do you harvest an entire solar system? Well, we have set up this world to be the logistics world, so all of the final production items will come here and be sent out of the solar system. All of the other worlds will just interact with this world, and then we'll convert one of these worlds into our forge world. So, the second planet here is nice and green and has oil, so it is going to be converted into effectively an oil platform. The planet on the outside of the solar system here has water on it, so that's kind of annoying. So we are going to be turning this kind of random rock into a supermassive factory world. So take a good look at it now, because oh boy, this planet is in for a makeover. But first, we gotta bring power here. So, we're going to be using batteries to do so. This planet is not good at producing power and doesn't have any hydrogen, so bringing charged batteries is kind of the only way. So we'll make a giant ring of these battery dischargers, or chargers, to feed the world. But, I didn't really bring enough of them, so <laughs> at least we'll get started with this, and then finish it up later. But right now, we're gonna start on production already, because we have so many machines to build. Literally hundreds, maybe even thousands. Because when I say we're doing all of production here, I mean like all of it, except for oil. But yeah, we're gonna bring in the raw ores from other planets to be processed here. And we're going to do everything with drones. So we'll have an interplanetary tower bring in all of the iron from the solar system here. The drones will bring it over to this tower, where it will be processed in a huge line of smelters. And when the iron is smelted, it will be ingots sent into another logistics tower, and more drones will carry them to wherever they need to be. So lots and lots and lots of drones. Like, this sky will be blotted out by drones by the end of the episode, let me tell you. But doing things this way will future-proof ourselves and be a lot more convenient. Speaking of convenience, I got something new, guys. I got something pretty cool. So, let's put down a couple belts first. Then we build our smelter as we usually do. Very cool. And we have the sorters go in and come out. So the finished product will be on this outbound line. So, that's how we usually go about things. However, I have discovered mods. And now check this out. If we hold Alt, we can just build like this. Pretty dang snazzy, eh? Where we'll copy all the recipes, the belts, and machines. And more importantly, this will save us literally tens if not hundreds of hours over the course of the rest of the playthrough. Cause we're at the point where we just travel to another planet, and then we just harvest the whole thing immediately. So we're gonna need to build hundreds and thousands of these machines. And we can also space things out differently. So, with this mod, if we drag things out, it's like one tower per machine, but that's kind of unnecessary. But if we press the plus and minus keys, we can spread things out a bit. Look at that! Yeah, this is gonna be huge! So yeah, if you're interested in mods for this game, check out the description below. But moving forward here, we gotta kind of plan things out. So, we're definitely gonna need another row of smelters. In fact, probably another two rows of smelters just for iron ingots. Then like another three rows for magnets, then four rows for copper, and then yeah, another smelter row for every other material in the game. So whatever has to be smelted, we'll have a row or two. But you see, <laughs> that's already like 500 smelters we're gonna be building here. So whatever your opinion on mods is, I'm sorry, but this had to be done. And now instead of focusing the entire video on just building this, we can boop it. 
Man, you know what? This series is literally just the boopening. There's so much that has to just be grinded out that it's insane. So, I've been busy. Built, you know, a couple hundred smelters already, and then we ran out of them in our entire galaxy. We have no more smelters. They're all used. So, I have to wait for more to be built. <laughs> well, this is insane. I kind of just YOLO place them, so they're in a huge row like this, so it'll just overflow. And like I was saying, all of them will end up going into more towers and sent to wherever they need to go. Yeah, pretty crazy. Took a long, 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 long time, even with the mod. It's nuts. Anyway though, still a couple things to do, but I'll do them later. Pretty much more silica, titanium, and then a few other little things down here. Also, I was messing around with the mod, and it's very versatile. So, say we want to build a constructor, right? Well, obviously this mod's gonna work with the constructors, but I didn't realize how it would work. I thought there might be like a limit or something on how many sorters will get copied, and like their patterns, but the mod just works with everything. I don't know what I was expecting. I thought, I don't know, it would break. Oh, I just didn't expect a mod to be like, this good right out the gate but yeah building assemblers is gonna be super easy and go figure it works with all the other buildings in the game too like dude this mod needs to be in the base game it's crazy how good it is especially now that we're getting into the late game and making projects like this hey, yep gonna do even more here so all the other smeltables are gonna be on this side so that's like the spicy beams the green crystals and the steel and then, oh yes, the party continues. Just the same way we did the smelters, we're going to be assembling everything. So every part in pretty much our little inventory thing here is going to be automated. So all of the spicy magnets in the universe, all of the circuit boards, the triangles, gears, the blue things, and everything else. And I've built this in such a way that in case this isn't enough, we can expand it. So we just have to build another assembler just on the other side, put in a couple more belts, and yeah, kind of see where I'm going with this, but we could just have this on the other side and go over this way. But will the belts fit in? So I have this as the export lane, and then yeah. Yeah, 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 this works just fine. And that just like that makes the magnets. Boom, bada boop, done. And all shall export over to here. And then guess what? You're never gonna guess. We're doing it again. <laughs> We're doing it again and again and again. The whole planet. The whole planet will just be machines. This is only the beginning. The only thing that's literally limiting me is the amount of machines in my inventory. But once this world is completed, oh bud, we are going to have all of the items we ever need forever. Like, no kidding though, like, we will actually have everything forever. This is an insane amount of machines. And since the towers are gonna be bringing in pretty much a full blue line of resources to manufacture this, everything's gonna run at like 100%. We're gonna have like thousands of the gold chips. Oh my goodness, and specifically these things. These are the most annoying thing in the game. Dude, if you're ever playing this, dude, dude, this is the spicy meatball of the entire game. They are needed for like all of the important logistics buildings. Just go absolutely nuts when starting on these. I'm so happy though that we're expanding on our process because oh my gosh, dude, our main world makes like one of these a minute. It's so sad. But now after 26 million years, we're done. All of the smelters are put in and my goodness, dude, we are gonna have all of these items forever now. All the assemblers are done, all of these are put in, everything's belted together to these, and ah, we are very close to rockin' and rollin'. There is, of course, the big problem that I'm sure most of you have thought of, and that is, what are we gonna do about the power? <laughs> 520 megawatts, yep, cool, fun. Yeah, we're gonna have to build like 90 of these, I think. The plan will be to make a ring of these battery dischargers all around the top of the planet. Because really, we have infinite batteries. All of the batteries are coming from our logistics world, and we have like plenty of power there. So it's just building this out. Just have to grab a few more of them. 
and then keep on building. I wonder, actually, does this work with every other building? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah! For whatever reason, I didn't think this would work, but of course it works. And just go like this all the way around. This is gonna take no time. Yeah, out of all the things with these mods, really the biggest time sink is waiting for the belts to be made and also getting all the resources we need. Takes a long, long, long time, brother. But it'll be worth it when we have like a hundred of these things discharging batteries and our power problems are solved on the world. It's great. Look at this. Gorgeous, a nice purple halo of electricity. Alrighty, each of these can output a maximum of 45 megawatts. So right now it's only like one point whatever megawatts, but that's fine. What is our power usage right now? It's probably like nothing, right? Yeah, it's super, super low because I disconnected the entire power grid from these machines over here. Oh wait, no, that's a blatant lie. Oh goodness gracious, we're good. Oh, just a couple of these towers aren't powered, but okay, dude, this is great. Yeah, I thought our power was gonna spike like crazily because all the power the towers needed to charge, but we're rocking and rolling. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, there it is. So that's when I connected the power, and now all of the towers are charged. Things are fine. So now we're just on the last two steps. Then first, we need to feed the beast and gather up all the materials we need. So iron, copper, etc., etc. And we'll probably just start with this planet first, and then we'll bring in stuff from other worlds. And then we also need to bring over every single drone that I have ever made. So I think this is most of them, 2,300. And that might be able to cover this world. But every logistics tower is gonna take uh, 50. So eh, maybe it's close. I don't know. Oh yeah, actually no, never mind. We are super not gonna have enough drones because I was lazy. <laughs> or as I like to really consider it, I am future-proofing myself by connecting all the resource nodes up to logistics towers, which are gonna need even more drones. So I went through every single resource node on this planet, and all the raw resources are going into here. Honestly though, although this might be seen as inefficient, it saved me so much like time. It's only really inefficient like power-wise. Time-wise, instead of like building all of the independent like smelting systems around the mines, this is way better. Like IRL only took me like a few hours to hook up this whole planet. When we're starting on our other world, our first forge world, it took me hours and hours to hook up all the resources because I was belting them. You know, this is great. And power is still looking pretty good. Then the last little piece of the puzzle before we get this whole system turned on is I just wanted to build all of the interplanetary logistics towers, which will be gathering up all the raw resources from the solar system. So we got a tower for the iron ore, the copper ore, the stone ore, etc., etc. And now we get this party started. So this is all the drones I have in the entire galaxy. Oh, and off they go. So hopefully we have enough, but... <laughs> Even with 3,000 drones flying around, this is gonna look awesome, dude. We will probably have to kind of chill on things, though. Maybe put like 20 drones per tower. Let's see how that goes. Or not goes. Probably didn't set a tower right. So they're supposed to go over here. You're supposed to demand. And now we got more drones flying. <laughs> dude, this is actually gonna be the craziest planet we've ever built. Because as we place more drones everywhere, just more and more are gonna be flying. And yeah, we're literally gonna blot out the sky. It's kinda ironic, actually. We're gonna be making like a Dyson Sphere of drones around this world before we even start on our actual Dyson Sphere. Okay, and I think I got most of the resources online now. And things are already looking beautiful. Oh my gosh. Wow! How does this look from the planet view? Wow! <laughs> this is the coolest thing ever, dude! I love the drones in Factorio, but this just looks so crazy. It looks so good at night because they like glow. And yeah, it's almost like a Dyson Sphere of drones.
So let's get on to the next phase then, where we start loading these towers with even more drones too. So these are gonna deliver the materials to the assembler area and get all those machines running. Oh, speaking of, how are these machines looking now that they're all going? Now uh, it's looking extremely boring because these are smelters, aha. Uh -huh. Neat though, look at all the blinking. Looks like a computer chip or something. Oh, and speaking of computer chips, how is our computer chip production? It's not moving at all. Why? Does this need drones? Probably. Just need more moving, more grooving, and ideally, we run out of resources before we run out of capacity. Okay though, this is kinda like part one. Then we throw more drones into these towers, because everything just keeps on bouncing around. And now, we should be done. Pretty much every single tower that needs drones has drones. I think. So let's go for a little tour. Let's see what it looks like. It looks beautiful, man. This game is so pretty. Let's see it from a planet view. Wow. <laughs> wow, okay. So we ended up using about 2,000 drones here, and yeah, this is what 2,000 drones look like. However though, I probably made a lot of mistakes, so I'm gonna quickly check on all that. But you know what, we're actually pretty good. The only problem I'm really seeing is with our copper. We do not have enough, which is the problem we wanted. That just means we have to go to other worlds and harvest them. Yeah, because with the copper not producing enough, we're not making enough magnets, and we're not making enough circuit boards. So that pretty much stops all of our assembler production. But once we get the copper, all of this should be running super, super well. And then we're gonna have all of the precious purple in the world. So super quick, just gonna go over to the logistics world and grab a little bit of copper. And you know why stop there? Let's get everything else we need. So I came out to the ice world here and built a really small base because this planet has fire ice, like 11 million of it. And all of it is in this nice little area here. So I made a little outpost, and now this will be able to make graphene. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, and just needs a couple chemical facilities. Oh, but the feast has really begun now. So I set up the same little battery power thing on our oil world, and we're quickly gonna grab some organic crystals as well. We got a rare vein where we can just mine the crystals and send them out, which is super, super convenient compared to having to make like oil products and stuff. But we still had to do some oil work. Just a little bit though, and I've made a temporary system making sulfuric acid. This is just for the uh, spicy beams, or the titanium alloy, and these things are needed all over the place. And we just bring everything back with some extra interplanetary towers, and that's it. Everything should be able to be automated now. I'm even bringing some hydrogen, because I have a feeling we're gonna need that soon too. Ah, main thing. This is now a fully operational Forge world. Let's turn this off for a moment and admire the beauty of all the drones. Honestly, I can't tell the difference from before. It's just so much madness all over the place. But at least our machines are actually running now, right? Right? Hello? No power. <gasps> oh! The power. Oh no. Oh no! <laughs> uh oh. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of power. So that just gets solved by bringing over more batteries. We're making enough power over on our logistics world. It's just we don't have enough batteries in like our system to bring enough back and forth. So once we get like, I don't know, 10,000 batteries, we throw them in here and everything should get powered just fine at that point. But it's fine if everything's slow, so long as it's working because now we are at the last step in our final ultimate goal and that is getting all of these like advanced items back into our solar system and into that logistics hub production line so we can automate the drones the interstellar ships the towers and all that so on the opposite side of the planet from the import side there is now an export side and all of our items will be heading out of here and going back to the solar system so we are pretty much maxed out on all these shiny things and all of these shiny things. And both of these towers, along with some copper and iron, 
will allow us to build all of the logistics items. So the towers, the drones, etc. What we gotta do is set up the towers. So these will have the infinite range so things can be sent to other solar systems. Oh, and last side note, I'm using these towers here only temporarily to send items back to our home solar system. I'll reorganize things once we have more equipment. And now after like a million hours, we can get this whole thing working by going to our first logistics world here and setting a couple of these towers to demand. And after using literally every logistic drone in our entire galaxy, we're on the last step. We just need to set these towers to demand and they will feed all of the machines that make the logistics parts that we need to harvest the other solar systems. Okay, but that's infinite logistics towers. The drones are re-automated, finally. And our ray receivers too. And oh, especially the batteries. Batteries, omega hyper important. Then we just have the deuterium and these guys next. Oh no, these guys are good to go. So then it's just the deuterium. But we'll be doing that next time because we'll be getting the deuterium either from the gas world and the other solar system or we'll harvest our solar system's gas giant. But anyway, that is all for today. So I hope you guys enjoyed. And again, if you did, remember to leave a like. But for now, have a fantastic rest of your day and bye bye Thank you.